Welcome back to the Josefa Salinas Show. It sure is good to have you all here. Today we're talking with a radio personality, K-Earth 101's own Renee Taylor. Renee, you and I both know that our lives have changed a lot over the years in radio. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in radio, gosh, I want to say it's almost 30 years. I'm not claiming that number. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe. So talk to me about how life has changed. We talked how radio has changed. But how has your life changed? When you started in radio, you were probably single. Definitely single, enjoying life, had a lot of fun. Oh, yes. Um, uh, collected a lot of friends along the way in different cities and different stations. Uh, actually met my husband in the Bay Area at, of all people, I'm one of those people that can say I met my husband in a club because I spent a lot of weekends in clubs. Oh, did we both. <laughs> and so I met my husband in a club. Um, he was there for his birthday, not normally there, and since I was there every week, I knew he was not a regular. I'm like, ooh, okay, who's this guy? Um, and so we dated for a long time. Actually, we were probably, as long as we've been together, we've been married less years than we've been together. Wow. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, so. Now, there was something a little different about your proposal, wasn't there? If uh, I remember the story correctly? I, um, I gave him a wedding for Christmas, <laughs> for his Christmas gift. Um, he had been asking me to marry him, marry him, marry him, and I was like, no, no, no. And then I planned the whole wedding because we all go home to the Bay Area for Christmas, right. all our friends and family, right. everybody we knew since we were up there when we met. So he, um, so we were all going home, and all my family and friends were going to be home too. So I secretly sent them all the invitation to the wedding. We got married the day after Christmas, and um, I gave him, and we always exchange gifts on Christmas Eve. So I gave him our wedding invitation in a box and he was like oh great we're getting married next year and i'm like no you're getting married in two days <laughs> and I, really yeah so plan the whole thing wow. from la back to the and we went back to the bay area i took my dress up and told him it was a girlfriend's new year's eve dress that was coming up to the bay area too right. and i was like she has to fly so she asked me to bring her dress up in the car instead of so she wouldn't have to pack it and so he believed it <laughs> Now, that, now that's a story. Yeah. You'll be telling that one to your grandkids for sure. Let's talk a little bit about motherhood. Because I remember uh, at the station when you um, announced to everyone that you were getting ready to have a baby, that you were going to have a baby. The listeners were all very excited. and I was very excited. Let me just actually add, I didn't think I wanted to be a mother. I was enjoying life. Everything was great. We traveled. We were, you know, we were thinking about buying a home and, and, uh, God had a different plan. Um, and so I ended up pregnant, announced it, made it to my fifth month and, uh, had, uh, emergency delivery. So, uh, Taylor was born at five months, five and a half months premature. Uh, she lived for nine days and then passed away. So, um, that pretty much rocked my world, <laughs> to say the least. It was like, okay, how do I go back after something like that to a life on the radio where I'm happy and I'm, you know, involved with people? And so it was a slow walk back uh, with God because <laughs> I couldn't have done it alone. So it was a slow walk, slow walk back to a different life, a different me. Um, but... He redeemed my story, <laughs> as you know, with my son, um, Elijah, who is now 11 years old. So let's stick with Taylor for just a minute, because I remember that time very well. Mm. Talk about how, as an air personality, when we, when we come to a, a situation in our life where we've had something drastic and devastating happen to us, a lot of times we share that with the audience. Well, I will. So oh, I, was gonna, I thought I'd keep it together for that. But I, so I did, um, since she was born premature and it happened quite suddenly, I ended up, I was on the air and then I wasn't on the air for like a couple of days. And so I had to come back and let everybody know what happened. And I pretty much basically said what happened and then ran away to my mom. <laughs> Me and my husband drove to the Bay Area and I went home and kind of, you know, I wanted my mom. <laughs> so I went home, hung out for, God, about a week. Um, didn't really answer emails, didn't look at anything. And then I opened my email to 500 people that had reached out. Um, 
Um, they had been through the same thing. It was, and I think when you lose a child, you feel very alone by yourself. Nobody else goes through this because they don't talk about that part of pregnancy. Everybody right. has a baby and they're all wonderful and everything's great. And so you don't get the side of the story where people don't always have the happy, beautiful child ending. And so, um, there were 500 listeners that I read every single email and tried to answer them all that really um, let me know I wasn't alone. And so that was a very special and important time. Yeah, I think that that's one of the things that, to me, makes a difference in who a person on the radio is and an air personality. Mm -hmm. Because so much of our life is shared with our audience. Yeah. Um, I know that they've all seen my kids grow up on the radio, you know, with my audience. And I know that that moment was really special with uh, with your listeners to share that. Yeah. I ended and that up, had to help. Yeah, oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. So like I said, because I found out I wasn't alone. I was in a, this big community of women who... Um, who prayed with me, who told me how they got through it, who I ended up, uh, one girl, me and her emailed probably for about five months and carried each other through the whole thing because um, uh, it happened to her. Actually, her sister connected us. Her sister was like, my sister just went through the same thing, and I was wondering if I sent her your email. And so me and her sister ended up connecting, um, and we um, probably spent about six months comforting each other. Um, and then I made a lot of other friends that had been through the same thing. Um, that I'm still to this day, like, we don't talk every day, but it's like, oh, Christmas, or they'll see me on Facebook. It's like, hey, how's the kids? Or, you know, how are right. things that um, I would have never got if I hadn't um, shared my story. Right. Because I could have just went, oh, you guys, I really don't want to talk about this. <laughs> but it was, I'm a radio personality. It's going to be hard not to talk about. And I think that's an important thing that um, distinguishes radio stations where the program director understands mm -hmm. that it's okay to share a story. It's okay to let your air personalities be a human being. I don't yeah. even call it a personality. I call it being a human being yeah. because that's what radio is. It's a, this human being that's talking to you every day, playing music, sharing your life, listening to your life because we both know the stories we've heard from listeners. Yes. Oh my gosh, I know way more of some people's business than I probably should. <laughs> but that's what radio is all about. Mm -hmm. And then you found your way. So you were in the valley and found your way to the mountain top. Oh, yes. Not only with God, but also the adoption of your son. So we're going to come back and talk about Elijah and how he came into your life. So don't go away. There is so much more coming up right here on the Jose Fasolina Show because not only did Renee gain a son, she lost her job and found a brand new talent. It's all next right here. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Nice Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. 